Pentecost, he came out of the forest of Tasmania. He had not been eaten by Tasmanian devils. They are a creature this big that eat bones and fur and everything. As big as you? No, no, they're this big. <laughs> <laughs> but they can demolish a cow. They just go vroom, 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 and lots of them. And they fight and their faces are scarred. They are not sweet little creatures to have in hug a bunny type zoophiles. They go to pat one of those and you miss your fingers. But he survived snakes, Tasmanian devils, and he came to a town. There was the pub. He goes into the pub. He said, is there anywhere to stay? And they said, no. But you could come to our place because the man that owned the pub was the builder and owned everything. He said, we'll get in our cars. And they drove their cars across the road. They did not walk. And this is the joke. The man who owned the motel there said, I have been studying history and geography. Can you make a document to say, my hotel was where Abel Tasman landed, and we will make a big monument to Abel Tasman. And he replied, he did not land here. I will make a document to say he stayed in your motel room. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I, I remember his jokes when he doesn't. <laughs> but uh, you read it in, in English, yes? I, I um, read it through uh, the Katerina Gajewski translated my book from Russian to English. I'm very proud of that. You read the English. Yes, I did, yes. Now, look, we should finish with a couple of Australian jokes. Do you know any Australian jokes? <laughs> well, I remember uh, the first words uh, that I tried to understand. I, I learned, you see, my really bad English, because it takes practice again. You, you, you stay for longer, three, four days, week two, you start. Come again. Huh? Come again. Come again, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I try to do it in the near future. Yeah. And uh, I uh, went by car, a uh, university car. They gave me a car at the University of Canberra, Australian National University. I said, uh, in the evening, I went to the center of the city. Small city, uh, not, not crowded. who stay, uh, I pass them, and I see they cry me Hey, 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 hey! I said, no, so, so friendly. What they cry? I I try to understand. I said some letters, but I don't know. I, I went about a couple of kilometers. They, they cry. Lights on, lights on! <laughs> Switch on my lights. This <laughs> <laughs> I drive it at night without uh, light. But when it starts more dark, dark streets, I understand that it switch light and they very cheerfully say, Lights on, lights on! Which is weird, which is Far, far, pretty far. It's not like in Russia when I was driving somewhere as a passenger and my friend was driving, Lolita was driving, and the cop stopped us. We could not understand what she had done wrong. And he said, it is such and such a fine, but if you pay now, there is no paperwork. And she said, but this is so much. He said, I have to pay for my dacha at Peridelkina. <laughs> <laughs> but the two most famous old Australian jokes, one of them is used by Makluha Maklai, when the sea captain said, it is too dangerous to go ashore in a little boat. The sharks are there. He said, there are no sharks. 
the crocodiles have eaten them. <laughs> <laughs> and the other joke is that was written three years after the first white criminals were there in Australia. It said, why was it impossible for Christ to be born in Australia? Well, there's certainly not three wise men and nobody's seen a virgin yet. <laughs> <laughs> and so they are the first and best Australian jokes. But one of the jokes is about uh, your father, uh, father Sharp. Oh, yes. Tells to his son, young Sharp, young small Sharp, how to catch surf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah? No. Like, you know, no, they don't. Yes, know. but you don't know. There's, there is a, there is a person, there is such an explanation. The father Sharp said, don't, don't catch him straight away. You should, should wait. You should come to him, push him from behind once again under his legs like that. He'll be frightened. And he will start you know, running, you know, swimming quickly towards the shore. But then you come and bite uh, part of his uh, uh, death. Mm -hmm. The surfboard. Sur surfboard. <laughs> bite a piece of this shell, but he will fight him more than more, and you push him again. And uh, then you leave him alone, and uh, come up a short distance and look at him. He reaches uh, the border, bottom. He, he waits in water again, but already thinking that he is saying, you tell uh, tonight in the pub, and then in the club, uh, how he was attacked by a shark, how, how he was saved because he was brave enough to push it back and something. And this story more and more in his mind at this moment you come and catch him. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, baby shark said, Baby, oh, why is it so complicated? <laughs> uh, is it easier just to come and eat this bloody surface trip? No, it's possible, but you see, I, I prefer to eat surfers without the contents of it, their intestines. <laughs> <laughs> without the content of their intestines. This is a, this is a, this is a re, remake, remake from the mm, small poem of uh, uh, David uh, that is published in this book that uh, will be soon. This is a fifth edition of my book, uh, Light of Boomerang, but together with the Australian alphabet. Australian alphabet it is a, a poetic, poetic uh, explanation of each letter. A, B, C, D, and so uh, For S, it's shark. For letter S, it's shark. It is a story that uh, was invented by David. Very, very nice poem. And it's translated into Russian language by Milena Nikunova from Moscow Zoo. <coughs> and um, um, Mrs. Gajewska, uh, Catherine, who translated the whole book, also checked or edited the uh, translation from Russian to Russian. Everything is correct, yes? She proves. Before we finish, we should have, oh, they'll buy the book, won't they? Won't you? You'll buy his book, won't you? Where, when is it, where is it available and it when? It isn't printed yet. It isn't printed yet. Do, you, do, we, do we know where it will be or when? You'll yeah. hear about it. Uh, no, I'm talking about everybody <laughs> here. We need to. For people who, for instance, don't like to spend or waste money for the book, I, I will come here, for instance, uh, maybe. Yeah. It will shock you or not.
One last thing before we all go home. Um, you all know Svetlana Chermanosova from MGU Faculty of Foreign Languages. Well, she came to my house to stay in Australia. Yeah. She had been flying for 26 hours and she was very tired. I tell the story, you all know I love her, don't you? And she would not mind me telling the story. She had flown for 26 hours, came in late, and I said, my dear, the dogs will bark tomorrow. I am getting my surfboard out at five in the morning to catch a few waves down near Bondi Beach. Sleep in. The next morning I got up at half past four, I get my surfboard, the dogs bark, and standing at the door of her room downstairs was an Armenian woman wearing a swimming costume that was red and blue and yellow and green and black and orange and purple and lilac and puce and every color imaginable. She is not a thin woman. She is rather substantial. She said, I am coming swimming with you. Well, we went swimming. I went out on my surfboard. But I was telling the students that Svetlana Termanosova asked for a camera. The surf club is 120 years old. And they had a sign painted 120 years ago. And it said, uh, and I was telling this in the great hall of the First Humanities Building. And it was all filled. And the students were laughing at my jokes. And I said, and she takes a photograph of it and it says, <coughs> in the event of a shark attack, do not defecate or urinate in the water. <laughs> do not swim quickly, but proceed to the shore with slow, even strokes. Do not run, do not shout. Find a surf club official and calmly tell him there is a shark in the water. But <laughs> Lana Terminosopha said, I would have disobeyed all of this immediately. <laughs> well, I was telling this to the students, and suddenly there was silence. Oh. And they all stood up. She was standing behind me. <laughs> and what she said was, what Professor Wandsborough hasn't told you is the following. That swimming costume he designed, which I thought were, that he described, that I thought was lovely. He said it was red and green and orange and pink and purple and mauve and black and red. A good swimming costume. She said, I went into the water while he went out on his surfboard. The first wave that came, said the Lama Terminosopha, I tumbled over. And I stood up and there was no swimming costume. <laughs> <laughs> and I saw it going towards the shore. And then the tide turns and it goes out again a kilometer, then comes in with the next wave. I cannot stand up, I am like this when the water is sucked away. And I see Wandsbra on his surfboard advancing towards me. Oh, and then suddenly a miracle happens. My swimming costume came straight towards me. I grabbed it, went like this. As he went past me on his surfboard. <laughs> the story is true. Even though I saw none of the last part of it, I believe it to be true. <laughs> May mention to this audience that uh, a couple of days ago uh, there was a uh, David Wandsbrough's birthday. No. Usually we uh, try to uh, congratulate the birth with the. Uh, could you come? <laughs> yes, uh, David, I uh, congratulate you with it. your birthday. I I don't know. I was 35 or. 37. 37 years old. 37 years young. Gentleman uh, who is uh, so spiritually young, spiritually big. I, I, I see his aura. aura. It's, 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 it's filling all this uh, room. So we are all this uh, time, when, especially when he cries like my warrior. Like too. We are all inside of his hour. And that's why I try to uh, congratulate him and uh, to, be, to be very happy uh, to point out that he's very really uh, religious uh, 
first. He's uh, above. Uh, his uh, mind is above all these uh, particular confessions that uh, try to be part of the population of mankind. So this side, of this side, of this. he understands and feels uh, both the most pure and open way. That's the special context. But anyway, he, he has a respect to each one confession, to Orthodox as well. And uh, he visits some ch churches and uh, uh, looks at the icons and he feels that, that they also are kind of uh, spiritual expression or feeling of the painter icons, the paints. That's why I understand that you uh, have very much respect to our Troitsia Gil Laura. It's a holy place where our Pater has his control. He, he lives also in Moscow, in some places, in, uh, in some churches, he makes his service, but his uh, role is in Troitsia Gil Laura, one of my friends. Read Pavel Florensky. Yeah. What was the name of the guy whose book I bought the other day? Okay. The little one we bought. The same as they liked in um, this, this oh, book. The Nielsen Say it loudly. The Nielsen I read his What Happens After Death, and I think that is a pretty accurate description. <coughs> yeah. Nicholas has something <coughs> hidden, I think, or yeah. hiding something there. <laughs> yes, but David is uh, something how he looks like in my imagination. No. <laughs> <laughs> David and Nicholas, thank you very much for coming and speaking with us this evening. Thank you very much.